Hello everyone. Welcome to Deep Sight. In the previous video, we introduced the famous Plantagenet dynasty in British history. The late medieval history of Europe is marked by struggles revolving around royal power, especially in the major nations of the time. While France ultimately emerged victorious in the Hundred Years' War, England fell into a protracted civil conflict that lasted several decades, the Wars of the Roses. Spanning the mid-15th to early 16th centuries, this war was long, complex, and brutal, filled with intrigue, power struggles, bloody massacres, and fratricidal conflicts. It not only altered England's historical trajectory, but also laid the foundation for the rise of the Tudor dynasty. In this episode, we'll delve into the causes, course, and far-reaching impact of this war. Let us unveil this bloody and intrigue-filled chapter of history together. Today, we begin with two significant figures from the late Plantagenet period, Richard II and Henry IV. Chapter 1. The Early Reign of Richard II. Richard II, Richard John Bolingbroke, was one of the most controversial kings in English history. He ascended to the throne on June 22, 1377, at the tender age of 10, following the death of his father, Edward the Black Prince, who was Edward III's most trusted and esteemed son. Tragically, the Black Prince died while Richard was still a child, and Edward III passed away in 1377. According to the laws of succession, Richard became King of England, thus taking on the heavy responsibility of ruling the kingdom in his youth. During Richard II's minority, the kingdom was governed by a regency council led by his uncle, John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster. While Richard was the nominal king, many decisions were actually made by the adult nobles. This period was fraught with challenges, including intensifying social conflicts, financial crises, and the ongoing Hundred Years' War with France. In 1381, England witnessed the famous Peasants' Revolt, sparked by oppressive taxes and social injustices. Under the leadership of Watt Tyler, the rebels quickly gathered momentum, marched on London, and temporarily seized control of the city. Despite his young age of 14, Richard II demonstrated decisiveness during the suppression of the revolt. He personally negotiated with the rebels, promising to meet their demands. However, once the revolt was quashed, Richard reneged on his promises to the peasants. This incident showcased Richard's political acumen even at a young age. While he managed to stabilize the situation temporarily, the event eroded some of the public's trust in him. Chapter 2. Richard II's Personal Rule As Richard II grew older, he gradually freed himself from the control of his regents and began ruling independently. His personality was complex and temperamental. He enjoyed a lavish lifestyle and dealt harshly with his opponents. Richard implemented a series of centralizing policies aimed at weakening the power of the nobility and strengthening royal authority. This sparked discontent among the nobility, particularly the powerful Lancaster family. In 1386, Richard II clashed with Parliament, which sought to curb royal power and dismiss the king's close advisors, especially those in charge of finances. This confrontation led to the 1387 Lord's Appellant Rebellion. A group of prominent nobles formed a council, seized control of the government, and expelled Richard II's trusted advisors. This marked the public escalation of tensions between Richard and the nobility. By the early 1390s, Richard II attempted to regain full control of the kingdom. He reconciled with the powerful French king Charles VI through a marriage alliance, which temporarily eased external pressures. However, Richard's autocratic rule and extravagant lifestyle cost him significant support among the nobility. His harsh measures against dissenters, including executions and exile, further exacerbated domestic discontent. Chapter 3. Richard II's Marriages and Family Richard II's marriages were also significant political maneuvers. His first wife was, and of Bohemia, daughter of Holy Roman Emperor Charles IV. Their marriage in 1382 strengthened ties between England and continental Europe, however, and failed to produce an heir, much to Richard's disappointment. Her death in 1394 from illness deeply grieved Richard, who declared a year of mourning across the kingdom. In 1396, 
Richard married Isabella of Valois, daughter of French King Charles VI. Isabella was only six years old at the time, and the marriage was more of a political alliance than a traditional marital relationship. While the union was diplomatically significant, it faced domestic criticism as many found the marriage to such a young bride inappropriate. Chapter 4. The Power Struggle Between Richard II and the Nobility The power struggle between Richard II and the nobility was a defining feature of his reign. Richard sought not only to consolidate royal authority, but also to diminish the influence of powerful noble families, particularly the prominent magnates. This ambition led to a series of confrontations, most notably the 1387 Lords' Appellant Rebellion and the 1397 Counter-Appellant Purges. The Lords' Appellant Rebellion. In 1386, England faced a financial crisis, and Richard's trusted advisor Michael de la Pole was appointed Lord Chancellor. De la Pole's policies angered Parliament and the nobility. Led by Henry Bolingbroke, later Henry IV, Thomas Beecham, Earl of Warwick, and Thomas Mowbray, Duke of Norfolk, a coalition of nobles demanded de la Pole's dismissal. Richard II refused to compromise and assembled a loyalist army to confront the opposition. However, the Lord's Appellant also raised their own forces, culminating in the Battle of Radcott Bridge in 1387. Richard's forces were defeated, forcing him to accept the demands of the rebels, disband his army, and dismiss de la Pole. This rebellion marked a major challenge to Richard's authority. The Counter-Appellant Purges By 1397, Richard II launched a campaign to retaliate against the nobles who had opposed him in the past. Exploiting a dispute between Thomas Mowbray, Duke of Norfolk, and Henry Bolingbroke, Richard accused both of conspiracy. Mowbray was exiled for life, while Bolingbroke faced a 10-year exile. Richard escalated his actions by arresting and executing several prominent nobles, including Thomas Beecham, Earl of Warwick, and Richard Fitzalan, Earl of Arundel. These purges further deepened the rift between Richard and the nobility, destabilizing his reign. Chapter 5. Henry Bolingbroke's Family and Early Life Henry Bolingbroke, later Henry IV, was a member of the Lancaster family and a cousin of Richard II. He was the son of John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster, and Blanche of Lancaster. Born in 1367, Henry came from a powerful and wealthy family, with the Lancasters holding significant influence in English politics. Henry displayed exceptional military and political skills from a young age. He received a fine education and participated actively in domestic and international military campaigns, gaining experience and acclaim. Henry married Mary de Bohun, with whom he had several children, including the future king Henry V. Chapter 6. The Rise of Henry IV and Gaining Popular Support In 1398, tensions between Richard II and Henry Bolingbroke escalated further. At that time, Henry was exiled for his involvement in a plot against Richard, known as the aftermath of the Epiphany Rebellion. Henry was sent to France, and during his exile, his father, John of Gaunt, passed away. By tradition, Henry should inherit the vast estates and wealth of the Duke of Lancaster. Chapter 7. The Anti-Epiphany Rebellion and the Rise of Henry IV In 1398, while Henry Bolingbroke was exiled in France, Richard II seized his lands and properties as Duke of Lancaster. This move sparked widespread dissatisfaction, especially in Northern England, where supporters of the Lancaster family were furious with Richard II's actions. Henry himself gained more sympathy and support as a result. In early 1399, Henry Bolingbroke realized that if he did not act, he would lose his influence and support from the Lancaster family. He decided to return to England to seek revenge and restore his inheritance. Henry's return and march on London. On June 4, 1399, Henry set off from Le Havre, leading a small army across the English Channel to England. His campaign was supported by northern and central England, especially by nobles and soldiers from Yorkshire and Chester. Henry's forces grew rapidly as he aimed to reclaim the lands seized by Richard II. Henry's invasion went unexpectedly smoothly. He quickly took control of several important cities and castles, including Chester and Stamford Bridge. 
These victories bolstered his reputation and raised the morale of his army, attracting more supporters. As his army grew, Henry's next target was London. London, a key stronghold of Richard II and the political and economic center of England, was essential for Henry's ambitions. He hoped to seize the city swiftly and gain broader recognition and support, as well as to formally challenge Richard II. London's acceptance and Richard II's fall. On July 4, 1399, Henry's army arrived at the gates of London and gained the support of some key figures within the city. The citizens welcomed Henry, hoping he would bring reform and stability. With the support of the populace, the gates of London were opened to Henry, allowing him to enter the city without resistance. Richard II, upon hearing of Henry's advance, panicked. His supporters hesitated when confronted by Henry's army, and some even defected. Realizing the situation was beyond repair, Richard II found himself isolated and unable to reverse his fate. On September 29, 1399, Richard II was forced to abdicate the throne and voluntarily left London. The next day, he was captured by Henry. Henry IV formally declared himself King of England, marking the beginning of the Lancaster dynasty. Henry's accession was widely supported, not only because he was the heir to the Lancaster family, but also because he symbolized opposition to Richard II's despotic rule and the hope for reform. The Death of Richard II Controversy the death of Richard II remains controversial. Official records state that he died in 1400 from natural causes, although the exact cause of death was unclear. It is generally believed that he died while under confinement in the Tower of London. However, there are differing theories about the cause of his death, particularly regarding whether it was murder or part of a conspiracy. Official Account Natural Death According to contemporary records, Richard II was overthrown by Henry IV in 1399, after which he was imprisoned in the Tower of London. The official account states that Richard II died in 1400 from health issues, at the age of 33. It is widely believed that his death was from natural causes, such as illness or debilitation, but the specific illness was not recorded. Murder Theory Although there is no official confirmation of Richard II's murder, Many historians believe he may have been killed. During his confinement in the tower, Richard II was not under strict surveillance, and there were possibilities that he could have been deliberately killed. Some historians suggest that his death was orchestrated by Henry IV and his supporters to prevent any attempts at restoring Richard II to the throne. Contemporary records show that Richard II did not receive a formal royal funeral, which adds weight to the murder theory. His body was hastily buried in St. Peter's Chapel in the Tower of London, without an official ceremony. Impact of Richard II's Death Regardless of whether Richard II's death was due to murder, his passing removed a potential threat to Henry of E's reign. It meant there would be no further challenge to the throne from Richard II's supporters, allowing Henry IV to solidify his position. However, the mysterious circumstances surrounding Richard II's death left lingering questions about the power struggles within the English monarchy. Chapter 8. The Reign and Achievements of Henry IV Upon his ascension to the throne, Henry IV faced significant challenges and pressures. He first needed to stabilize the domestic situation and restore political and economic order. He implemented a series of measures to strengthen his rule while also attempting to address issues left over from Richard II's reign political and domestic reforms. Henry IV understood that his reign required broad support, especially from the nobility and parliament. To achieve this, he took steps to quell opposition and compromise with the nobility, ensuring stability within the country. He valued his relationship with parliament, using compromise and cooperation to push forward important legislation and policies. Foreign policy and war. In foreign affairs, Henry IV dealt with continued conflict with France, a legacy of Richard II's reign. Although he sought diplomatic solutions, war remained an inevitable option. He attempted to strengthen his international standing by forging alliances with other European nations, while safeguarding England's security and interests. Economic and Fiscal Reforms Henry IV also worked to restore the country's fiscal order and economic stability. 
He introduced measures to increase state revenues, including tax reforms and careful management of government spending to balance the budget. These efforts gradually improved England's financial situation and laid the groundwork for the country's long-term stability. Chapter 9. The Impact of the Power Struggles and Historical Evaluation The power struggle between Richard II and Henry IV was not just a political conflict. It reflected deep changes in English society and political structures. During his reign, Richard II attempted to strengthen the monarchy at the expense of the nobility, but his autocratic rule and conflicts with the nobility led to his downfall. In contrast, Henry IV successfully seized the throne through military and political means, marking the beginning of the Lancaster dynasty and setting the stage for the Wars of the Roses. Richard II's failure serves as a reminder that rulers must balance power with public opinion and cannot rely solely on personal authority and autocracy. Henry's success, meanwhile, highlights the importance of decisive action and broad support, though it also exposes the political instability and long-term consequences that can result from seizing power through violence. Conclusion the deposition of Richard II and the ascension of Henry IV marked an important turning point in English history. Richard II lost the throne due to his personality and policies, while Henry IV seized the crown through decisive action and widespread support. This historical moment not only illustrates the complexity and brutality of power struggles, but also reflects the profound changes and evolution of English society and politics at the time. The story of Richard II and Henry IV teaches us that rulers must balance power with public sentiment, respect laws and traditions, and effectively respond to both internal and external challenges. Their experiences and decisions influenced not only the historical course of their time, but also had a lasting impact on the English monarchy and political system. After Henry IV succeeded Richard II as King of England, the country underwent a series of changes and developments. Henry's reign marked the end of the Plantagenet dynasty and the beginning of the Lancaster dynasty. He was the first English king to speak English as his native language, reflecting the growing importance of English in national affairs. During Henry's reign, he faced numerous challenges, including ensuring the legitimacy of his throne, fighting against noble rebellions, and handling relations with France. Internally, England was politically unstable, with multiple Nobel uprisings and conspiracies. Additionally, Henry IV continued to claim sovereignty over the Kingdom of France, a tradition that began with his grandfather, Edward III. Henry I's reign was also an important period in England's religious reform. He supported church reforms and opposed certain policies of the Roman papacy. At the same time, he tried to limit the power of the church through legislation, laying the groundwork for the broader religious reforms that would occur during the reign of Henry VIII. Overall, Henry V's reign was a transitional period that laid the foundation for the development of the Lancaster dynasty and set the stage for key events in English history. Despite facing many challenges, Henry IV worked to maintain royal authority and national stability. After his reign, his son Henry V ascended the throne, marking the beginning of a new chapter for England during the Hundred Years' War. Dear friends, this concludes today's exploration of history. Henry V's reign laid the groundwork for the Wars of the Roses. How will this epic struggle for the throne shape England's future? Do you believe Henry V's seizure of the throne was a just victory or a power-driven conspiracy? What lessons can rulers learn from Richard II's failure? What can we learn from history? Be sure to tune in for our next episode. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. I'm your time travel guide, Lawrence. From the past, we learn lessons that shape our future. Stay tuned for more fascinating historical insights, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell for more exciting historical content. See you next time.